to Profit with a Plan podcast. This is where you can get some great ideas to create your most profitable small business. Just so you know, financial planning isn't only for those that have a lot of money or run big companies. A workable financial plan is for us everyday small business owners and professionals that want to make great financial decisions that lead to bigger profits. So join me, Marcia Reiner, your financial business strategist, fractional CFO, and certified financial planner, each Tuesday for some smart ideas to add more profits to your bottom line. I do help business owners grow their profits fast using some unique ways of growing their income and spending strategically that produce bigger profits without killing themselves or constantly chasing more clients. If you're curious, share my podcast and let's chat to see how we can grow greater profits in your business. So I'm super excited today to have my dear friend, Tiffany Yelverton with me. She is with Entice Me, and we're going to talk about sex and money. Yes, we are. Tiffany is the founder and chief sexinista of Entice Me and Sexy Survivors. She's a master of enticing others to experience soul-changing growth, personality and professionally, personally and professionally by embracing pleasure and connecting it to their core sexual confidence. Combining her experience in corporate management and training with her entrepreneurial spirit, Tiffany manifests transformations in ways most never dreamed possible. As an expert in sexual health and wellness, she embraces an unconventional concepts which enable individuals cup and couples to bring new unexpected joys and connections to life. She offers body safe, non toxic sexual enhancement products, coaching workshops, and parties to make it a sexier world. And damn well she does. Thanks, Tiffany. Welcome. Hi, Marcia. Thank you so much for having me on. You bet. So tell me, um, we all know that sex is a secret, right? You're not right. supposed to talk about it. And you know, we've had this conversation many times offline, you and I, about how sex and money really, truly relate. And I'd love to go deeper into that conversation today. Absolutely. You know, we, I think you and I've talked so many times that <laughs> there's the taboos that go along with sex and the shame and a lot of the limiting beliefs are the same with money as they are with sex or intimacy. They sure are. So how does one get past those limiting beliefs and open themselves up to be more receptive to more money as well as enjoyments in life? Well, when we are sh shut down sexually, I really believe and it's actually proven that when we're shut down sexually, we're not open to receive as much abundance as our, in our lives as we could. And when you don't have that feeling of abundance then it's harder to ask for things that you want mm -hmm. and one of my favorite topics to talk about in, in regards to this is that men seem so much more confident around self-pleasure and they also are more com comfortable talking about money mm -hmm. typically and asking for money or going for promotions that women don't feel that they're qualified for or that they don't feel like as comfortable asking for the sale or asking for more money or negotiating salaries, things like that. I think that that is so true. I mean, as, as a woman in business, I mean, we always have to make sure everything's perfect or, or make sure that we're offering more. And then we're always a little hesitant on, asking for the opportunity and what what truly is our, our value. Um, I wonder how that, I mean, really truly, how does that relate back to sex though? So, I mean, I know that when you're, when you're happy, you're happy and sex attracts a lot of things when, when that comes on, but really how does that work? So when we create our own orgasm, it creates the same neurochemicals and oxytocin and all the endorphins that we achieve when we have partnered sex. However, instead of those chemicals creating a bind and a bond between us and our partner, it goes through our system and creates self-love and helps us to really boost our confidence levels. 
so that we, and it blocks, it, testosterone is released. And so that also blocks a pain receptor to allow us to push past things that we may feel uncomfortable with. And so a lot of times, even with Olympic athletes, they are told to self-pleasure the night before. So it releases their stress endorphins. They have a more even keel, like they're not as stressed out or anxious as they normally are. And then they perform up to 13% better. Wow. That's amazing. I want to perform 13% better. <laughs> right. But I mean, you know, I think I, it, it makes total sense because when, when you've had a wonderful experience and you've enjoyed yourself, then you do feel you've got the glow, you've got the, the, the blood pumping through your system and you're feeling stronger like you can take on anything. That makes total sense. So what else, what else how else is the, is the sex and, and money correlated? Well, when our sex lives are going well, everything else in everyday life is a lot less stressful. Mm -hmm. All those little irritations that happen are just kind of smoothed over. And when women have a healthy attitude towards sex, it actually helps to close that gender wage gap. And they just, and just by having orgasms with yourself or with a partner, but especially with yourself, increasing that helps your happiness quotient, which is up to, like they say that if you increase your orgasms from one a month to one a week, it equals it pay jump of $50,000 just in how you feel about your life. And I know wow. that that's true with my clients and with myself, with being able to ask for raises and increases when I did work in corporate America, that once I learned about my body and really learned how to orgasm and what made myself tick, I had got a 300% raise just for asking for it. And it was a salary that no one ever thought that anyone in my position would be able to achieve. That's crazy that that's like that. But you know what, just sitting here thinking, I know that there's been many instances where um, I've had it, like I said, I've had a great time. And then all of a sudden I'm dealing with a client the next day or even that, that evening and I've made the sale. So I've been able to correlate the two back, but I don't really... I didn't really even consider it until you and I started talking. And that's why I thought this was such a wonderful topic to bring up that there's so much joy we can have physically and personally in our life. And it will translate over to the opportunities and the probabilities of us making more money in our business. Well, you know, people are attracted to people who are like vibrating at a higher level. And I'm sure that, all of the listeners have you've met somebody that you don't know why you're so attracted to them or why you want to do business with them but you just know that that's the person and a lot of times it's because highly sexual people are the most successful leaders in the world and napoleon hill talks about that in think and grow rich back in the 40s of how sex is so powerful and to really use it in the right way. But when you do have an orgasm, it's not just that myth that like healthy glow, oxytocin stimulates the production of collagen. So your skin tone and texture looks better. And so then you're like, people just are drawn to that. And it, you've got that confidence that you can, I tell all my clients and friends, like track it and see like it, when your sex life is going well, track and see if you're making more money. Because typically, if we look back at our lives, we go, oh, that's when it was. Hmm. That's, that's so, that's so, it's such a cool correlation. And it's such a rewarding correlation because we both, we all want to make more money and why I focus on um, making more profits with my business clients. But we all want to feel good inside and we want to have that connection and that enjoyment, and who doesn't want better looking skin? <laughs> I mean, right. come on, there's not, a, there's not a reason why we shouldn't be having more sex, right? Right. It so doesn't take do, somebody else, we can do it ourselves. I was just gonna say, <laughs> what are some of the tips that we can do that can help us, um, like, if we, like you said, if we've got a big business deal coming up, or we've got a big client that we're working with, or, or a big presentation, or 
like me, I've been speaking on stages lately. If, you know, how do I, how many hours afterwards, you know, will it last? I mean, what should I, what should I do? What are your, what are your recommendations? I would recommend that you self-pleasure before going on stage, you know, even an hour before or before you, you know, up in your hotel room. But when you do that, it's going to, those chemicals, so oxytocin stays in our bloodstream for, and on our system as women for three to five days. Love it. So men, it stays in their system about 20 minutes. And that's why <laughs> also we have that kind of neediness after sex. A lot of times is that we're, because it's to keep the man around where the men need to sp anthropologically spread their seed. So it's, but you know, as, as long as it's in the same day, I think it really makes a huge difference. I had one client that had already negotiated her salary and she didn't get quite what she wanted. And I sent her back the next day for a final call. And I, she texted me beforehand. She's like, I'm ready. I self-pleasured. And she ended up getting $10,000 more than she'd already asked for. That's amazing. That's amazing. So what, okay, so we've talked about self-pleasuring. We've talked about the benefits of self-pleasuring and getting more money. Um, I, can, I can think of another two or three, if not a dozen reasons why taking care of yourself with a partner or self-pleasuring can also make relationships and business be a lot better too, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you think about when you, somebody is super stressed out, and agitated and irritated, what do you, we always, like we say, they need to get laid, right? And it's right. Because we're thinking it, we may not say it. We may yes, not say thinking. it, but that's what we're thinking. Um, when I, but it, it just reduces the stress in your life so much, so much so that it, it improves your cardiovascular strength. And so when we have three orgasms or more a week, it cuts down on heart disease by 50%. And most you know, things that we're going through or office irritations or office arguments, or we're not happy with what our business partner is doing. A lot of it is stress related mm -hmm. and, or money related, and we're just not talking about it. So if you can, I think it's really important that we just take as much stress out of our lives as possible. And I think sex does that. So um, how does it work then, or how would you suggest um, if, if I'm okay in the relationship, so say I have two women or, or another man and he's not my partner, uh, she's not my partner, and I'm taking care of myself, but how do you encourage others to go down this path? Um, so that way we're both working from the right angles rather than me hitting a wall because they're stressed and I'm less stressed because I'm taking care of myself. Well, you know, that's such a touchy subject these days with me too. And we, you know, don't want to talk about sex necessarily in the workplace. And it's not like you could go, you know what you need to do? You need to go <laughs> masturbate today. <laughs> you need to go get laid. <laughs> right. You, know, you might feel better about this tomorrow after that. Go take your wife out. <laughs> but start with questions like, you know, how is your personal relationship going? Is, you know, what, are you taking time to go on date nights? Are you, you know, just encouraging it from a very benign level of saying, you know, you know, you should take your wife out on a date tonight, or, you know, have you guys gone to a movie lately? And, you know, do you hold hands? Because even that little bit of holding hands can brings that touch factor back into our lives and just say, you know, how are things going at home? You know what? Yeah. And getting people it, to start opening up that it's not such a taboo subject, that it's something that's healthy. Right. It, it, it is a challenge in the workplace. I'm sure when you're, when you've got your friends and you're at equal levels, it's a little easier to talk. Hey, you know, why don't you go, why don't you go take care of yourself? Or I've taken care of myself and I'm less stressful than you are and you can have that conversation but when you have that hierarchy of manager or business owner and employee it becomes a challenge um 
You know, I think that I think that this is um, I think that this is such a necessary topic. Is uncomfortable as it may be for a lot of people, I think that this is a necessary topic that we all need to have um, with ourselves, and it should be part of maybe even maybe even a, a you know in your in your um, employee benefits you know program talking about you know taking care of yourself, enjoying yourself you know, sexually and making sure that you're reducing that stress. Because if you've got two or three people in the office with you and, and they're stressed out, I mean, that's just going to live, increase the stress on everybody else. But it is a, it is a ginger topic that you don't want to, you know, you have to be careful with and, and saying it. But I think that having, um, I know you do a lot of work in the community, but I think this would be a great way of having just conversations, maybe in the employee handbook or something about, about sexual health and, and taking care of yourself. And you could also just even start the conversation with like, what is self-care to you? you yeah. Know? And just like, oh, I like to get massages. I like to do this. And like, what does that, you know, correlate? But absolutely. I mean, I, I think the attorneys would have a heyday with us if we said we needed to put sexual wellness into a handbook, but it is so true that, you know, as society, we've made sex so taboo. When it sex sells everything, it's everywhere. But Clothes, then we, liquor, cigarettes, everything, yep. you know, hamburgers. cars, hamburgers. Yeah. Like the, the girl doing the, the yeah. sexy hamburger bite. Yeah. I agree, but um, so how do we how do we get over that and have that conversation in a way that you that could open the door to, you know, telling someone who's completely stressed out and sitting the desk over from you or in an office over from you and supporting you because we're we're mostly business owners right. uh, listening to this, but you've got your you've got your junior person that's there that's just wigged out and they're constantly stressing. How do you have that conversation? There's got to be an easier way, and I love the idea of saying you know, how's, how's home life. But I think I like the idea a little bit better about how's your self-care? What do you do for self-care? Oh, I work out at the gym. I run, you know, well, what else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you take care of yourself? And that, yeah. you know, that's a, a way that can be like, it, not so direct, but you know, do you take care of yourself? Is your, you know, are you healthy sexually? Mm-hmm. I think those are, those are good tips because I know that, you know, those of us that are listening, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to take care of ourselves, but those around us that affect us every day aren't. Mm -hmm. And that's the message that we have to get out on there. I so would tell love me to be able to have like bigger forums where we could really talk about this and the po power of it in business. And, you know, also, I think it's important for business owners because it boosts your immune system as well. And so you're going to you're going to be happier, happier people take less sick days. Mm -hmm. So as a business owner, your staff is going to be more productive and working harder and they're when they're happier. Exactly, exactly. So Tiffany, you do some amazing stuff outside of the business um, and, and so much the, the, the personal sexual of the everyday normal person or the average person. You do some exceptional stuff too that I'm super proud of you for doing, but you go into different environments where people maybe are coming out of um, survivor situations or survivor meaning cancer as well as sexual um, trafficking and things like that. Tell us more about what you're doing for the community because I think it's so, it's so powerful. Well, I have a soft spot in my heart for people who've had traumatic experiences and that can be anything from a divorce to a body altering surgery or returning from combat situations and I really really love working with cancer survivors because men and women who have had especially sexually related you know genitals or breast cancer it's such related to how we feel about ourselves mm. our masculinity and our femininity and how you know 
when we've had a body altering surgery, a lot of times our confidence goes out the window. And so reintroducing intimacy back into the lives of those survivors is really, really something that I love doing and helping them reconnect because partners, their husbands or wives often feel like they shouldn't touch them because they're so fragile. And so I work a lot with local survivorship groups and all actually all over the world now with groups that to make sure that they're talking about that. That is so, that is so cool. It saves it, you know, if you can save that relationship and it really helps them get back on track. I think that that's amazing. And I'm so glad that you shared that because I don't think people realize that, that there's so much else that goes on psychologically and physically with, you know, the things that go on in life, such as cancer or coming back from service or having, you know, uh, problems or, or altering or t- divorce. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it, it takes a while to get that confidence back. And I think that that, as we've, as we've discussed earlier today, um, it ripples into everything that we, we do. And as business owners, most of our life is, is thinking about our business. And if we can't make good decisions because there's something else back here that's bothering us, uh, it does affect the money along the way. And, and it's, we don't, we don't really realize what we all go through. And it's so amazing that you brought that up and that you help people that maybe didn't think they had a problem, right? Yeah. So many times people I find say, oh, it's fine or it's good enough, but they don't even have the ability to know how great it can be and what more is possible in life. Just, just by taking care of yourself and having yeah. a wonderful relationship physical, intimate relationship. Um, I think that that's so important. Wow. Well, thank you, Tiffany. This has been amazing. I know that this is one of those topics that people go, what? Sex, money, wait a minute, go away. You know, don't say anything. But yet it's not a shush topic. It's something that, that we really need to do and take care of ourselves individually and as business owners. So it's amazing that you are able to have this conversation with us today too. So what else is going on in your life? What, what, do, you, what do you got going? I well, I have cool. a retreat coming up in Aruba the first weekend in May for women who really want to explore more. They want to have more self-actualization in lo- life, more self-love and explore what is possible. And it's called Bringing Sexy Back, a deep dive into sensual self-love. And it is gonna be four days of all-inclusive. I have a private villa rented. It's amazing of coaching and meditation and underwater photography and sensual activities with food. And, you know, just to really open up all of your senses to, open your taste buds and your eyes and your body to all kinds of things that are possible. See, and it's not just food can be sexy, right? Touching can be sexy. It doesn't have to all be the only one way of sex. It's not all, um, you know, missionary position. There's so many more things that you can do. And, and I love that. I love the idea that you can, you can enjoy sensual feelings with the taste of, a, a juicy fruit or a touch of something soft. And I, it's wonderful. I have been to some of your classes and, and they have been eye-opening, educational, um, really impactful. And it's never in a dirty, sloppy, messy, embarrassing way. It's always been done with class and taste. So I know that this event in Aruba is going to be outstanding. So um, good luck on it. Uh, how can they reach you? They can reach me directly at enticeme.com. Um, just online, go to my website. There's contact pages or Tiffany at enticeme.com. There's a pop-up on the site right now to register for Aruba. And on social media at Entice Me Soirees on all the social media. Love it. So do you have any tips for us? Do you have anything that someone who's listening can go back and and put into their life today to maybe make more profits in their business? 
Sure. I think it starts with, you know, that self-love. So if you have, can take time to self-pleasure, definitely do that if you're comfortable. If not, I'd love to talk to you more about that. But it starts with just even touch, like when you're taking your shower, a lot of times we're not even feeling our bodies anymore. We touch our skin, we wash our skin, but we don't actually take time to feel what that is. So even if you're putting lotion on, just take an extra minute to feel what your hand on your skin feels like. And then one of my favorite tips is from French women, they always wear sexy lingerie and they do it for themselves. And you actually hold yourself differently when you're wearing a beautiful bra and panties versus if it's just kind of that old one that should have been discarded a while ago. <laughs> um, and then also just, you know, accepting compliments and being graceful in that. Something that I really compare men to women in also is when women are complimented, we tend to say, oh, this, oh, you know, Oh, I got it on thing. sale. I got it on sale. Here's <laughs> where guys go, oh, thank you so much. And they don't ever try to justify a compliment. And so just learning to be graceful and saying thank you and zipping it mm. and just go, someone appreciated what I did to get ready today or something like that. And it's so I powerful. Love it. I love it. Just, just little itty bitty secrets that we can do. And so, um, guys, you can send your wife sexy lingerie, or maybe there's a nice little pair of satin or silky pants that you can put on. So it's not all just women. And also, you know, when was the last time you said, what a great job to another coworker, men, um, as well as women, what a great job you did. And I appreciate everything that you did. And that's the that's another great compliment. Not just, oh, you look fabulous today, right. but oh, what a great job you've done. Um, <clears throat> I think it goes a mile for our self-confidence and our ability, and that can help you make more money in your business. So, wow, Tiffany, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you. Um, I value you and think that you do an amazing job. Thank you. You bet. So, hey guys, thanks for listening today. I hope you found an idea or two to put into your business that will have you making more money and being more control and more profitable. Um, I would like you to know, specific, if you'd like to know specifically how you can increase your own profits in your business, let's chat. My contact information will be in the podcast description. I am also very, very excited to announce my book. Um, I'm on tour right now. This is Big Profit Secrets Exposed. It's available on Amazon. The link will be in the podcast description. It is my um, intellectual property. There's a lot of information you can get on this and you can take it and put it into work right away for you. Uh, also, if you want some podcast notes, hit me up. We'll send you a quick email with those off. And as always, I'd love to hear your feedback, ideas, and questions you have. Uh, please comment on today's podcast and let us know what you think. And so you can catch Profit with a Plan on any of your favorite podcast players. And we're looking forward to more profitable, and profitable information on next week's show. Until then, make your plans and...